Hello friends, good evening. Happy Thursday. Get this plugged in. Whoops. And going. Hi. I feel like I must I feel like I'm angled a little bit weird. <laughs> Let me put this down. That might be better. Hello, hello, hello. Going to pull up my stuff here on the computer and grab my coaster. Mm. I'm gonna put this back over here. Okay. Boom, boom, and boom. Okay. Decided to get myself a beer tonight. <laughs> It might as well be Friday night because the kids actually don't have school tomorrow. And by kids, I mean Izzy does not have school tomorrow. Hey, guys, there we are. Hi, Michelle. Um, and all. Yeah, so Izzy's school is off tomorrow for like teacher's development day or something. So they'll be home and then, um, and then we're going to Mexico next week. So it might as well be the weekend. Therefore, I'm drinking a beer tonight. So, um... You're almost done with my life from earlier today. Yes. So earlier today, I story planned for the care story kit, which I still need to download and edit that for tomorrow morning. I think I'll do that as soon as we're done with the live tonight. Um, so we story planned. I have nine different stories that I came up with and a week of Project Life. And then after the live, I went and picked up Izzy. I had to go get my bridesmaid dress run a couple of errands and then I came back here and spent a little bit of time putting together my journaling and calling my photos that I wanted to use for those layouts. So I actually, my plan was to have two layouts ready to go for tonight, but I actually have four layouts ready to go for tonight. So I think I'm going to try to get all four of them done and then that will be all of my Story Kit Crush care projects for YouTube for this entire month. So then I'm hoping I can maybe get those downloaded and edited and scheduled to YouTube so I don't have to worry about it this month. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. So we're gonna get all four of them done. The nice thing about story projects, and it's kind of, after doing a month long project like October Daily, that's really labor intensive. That is a really labor intensive project for me because that's just how I like to make it, right? My December daily will probably end up being very similar where it's just super labor intensive. It's so nice to come back to the story kits where I can keep things really simple and just focus more on the words and the and the photos and not so much on the interactivity and the, you know, really cool looking pages. They can just be about the story and that feels really good. So for me to sit down and be able to do my journaling and photos for four projects that just, it felt so good. It felt so good. So I feel like the most prepared that I have felt in a long time for this particular life. And that's kind of awesome. So that's what we're going to do. I am going to grab my stool though, so I can get you guys adjusted here. Um, and all that. Oh, your husband's at midnight this week. So you have plenty of time. Oh, that is the worst shift. I'm so sorry for your husband. That is the worst shift. The the midnight, the overnight one. Oh, yeah. Um, hey Kay, let me see who else here. Deb Millie. Hello, Karen. Thirsty Thursday. Hello. Heck yes. Cheers to that. Um and Terry, hey you guys. All right, so let's get you turned around and get to work on these layouts so we can just bust them out and get them done. I told Aaron that my goal when we get back from Mexico is to finish setting up, well, as much as we can, finish setting up my office or my studio up here. Get, you know, some of the different cameras going. If nothing else, to at least get my computer area the rest of the way done. I need to drill a hole in my desk and put some grommets in there to put wires down or cords down. Um, and we'll get like the track that you can put them on so that you won't really see them. I need to adjust my shelves. Um, and then once all of that's set up, I can then 
hook up my uh, webcam for my computer and my microphone for my computer, and then we'll be able to do some computer stuff too. All right, so the first layout we're gonna work on today is in my pocket page notebook. So, um, you know, this one is, it is filling up and that actually makes me really happy. So the last one I did in here was, I actually worked on this one with all of you guys with the uh, Teach Story Kit. So, oh, and this one I just did for a class. So if you take, I should have a big picture class coming out. Actually, she never even told me when that was gonna come. She said this week, but then didn't tell me. I'm gonna look that up. Where's my notebook? I need, I have to keep a notebook by me, you guys, now because I just like forget everything. So, so this is my running list of things that I need to like do and, and all that. It's. It's, it's a good one, you know? I went and bought a whole bunch of notebooks because I just, I lose my mind. I lose, I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached to my shoulders, right? So uh, I'm gonna check on big picture class, class. Find out when that is, because I can tell you guys when that is. So if any of you are big picture class subscribers, you can go check it out if you want or save it for another time. So anyway, and actually the interesting thing is, is this layout was done with the Care Story Kit. So there are pieces that I had already used and those are the pieces. So this is going to be the next one in the book. And um, this one is caring deeply. So what does it look like? What does it mean to care deeply for those around us? Um, so what I've got for this one, what I ended up doing, we sketched this earlier. So I was thinking the butterflies in the pocket, um, my journaling on the one side with some pattern paper and then a full page photo on the other side. What I ended up doing instead was, was, um, getting four different photos and I printed them all in black and white because the colors were just kind of all over the place. And that way it would look good with the pinks and the yellows. So I have a variety of photos here that just show different moments of, of like tenderness and care. And I thought that that would be a really good pair with this story. So let's just go ahead and adhere those down. So I created this template and this is something I will, I will share with you guys, especially as once I get my computer going, um, this is the kind of stuff I can share with you. So I created a template inside of Photoshop where I have, uh, this is a four and a, you know, four and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And then these boxes are just like the shape, the, the rectangle shape. And I um, sized them at two inches by four inches. So then I could adjust them on the page evenly so that there's a teeny tiny bit of white space around the outside of them. So that is this. And then I just left the boxes on there, colored them a light gray and printed it off like this. So that gives me a template to work with. And then for the photos themselves, I cropped them down to that same size. So two inches by four inches. And then I can put them into the boxes and they go exactly where they need to go. Um, Michelle, you need to catch up. You're fine. You don't have to, you don't have to catch up. Don't worry about it. Uh, the cool thing is, is those classes on big picture are like, if you ever just need a little bit of inspiration, like if you're ever blocked for stories to tell, go take one of my story or one of my, um, list letters and lenses classes with big picture and, um, you'll get a bunch of different ideas. So over on big picture, I have this, this class that I just submitted that should be out and I don't know if it is or not um it is my fourth class that I've taught for big picture so the very first one that I did is called storytelling with scrapbooking and so that has more of a more of a, a gear towards like why you should tell stories with your scrapbooking and the why's in the house right um so honestly I can't even really remember what the lessons are I know there's one about reason why. I know there's a lesson about um, journaling from facts and feelings. So it's like a journaling type of class. And really that's what all four of them are. Are They are meant to help you with the journaling part. So um, that's the first one is storytelling with scrapbooking. The second 
third and fourth classes are a series. They're actually a series of three that are called lists, letters, and lenses. And what I did is I wanted to take the three different writing, those three different writing styles. Those are not the only types of writing that you can do, um, but they are three of the types of journaling that I use the most, right? Journaling in the shape of a list, <laughs> journaling from a letter standpoint, like writing a letter, and then journaling using a lens, a, a specific story lens. So then what I did for those classes is I did an entire class that is about those three journaling techniques specifically for stories related to people. So your immediate family, your extended family, and then your like non-family. So friends, teachers, mentors, all of that kind of stuff. And in those classes, I do some videos and some worksheets that help you just brainstorm different people to write stories about or to include in your memory keeping. So it's meant to be kind of like a, yes, you know, an aid for telling stories, like helping you to tell stories and, and figure out different techniques, but even more so than that, to just get you thinking about what stories to tell in the first place. So I did that for people. The second class I did in that series was all about places. And then the one that is coming out is about things. So all the nouns, right? People, places, and things. So anyway, that is what the class is all about. Um, and you do get, you do get, there's a free trial, I think for like the first month, so you can do that. And then it's like 10 bucks a month. And right now I subscribe to it. <laughs> but I'm probably going to cancel my subscription um, because I don't really, I don't really take very many of the classes. I should take more of them. Also, if you're looking to learn more about Photoshop, Laura Wanzik, who, you know, did the, the stamps with Allie and she's the one leading December Daily, this December Daily prep party this year. Laura Wanzik has a class on big picture that's all about Photoshop and memory keeping. Um, that's an excellent class. So that's another option for, um, for learning some Photoshop stuff. Okay. I just want to make sure I kind of, all right. I want to decide if I want more of the yellow or more of the pink. Let's see what I think here. I honestly think I kind of want more of the yellow because it, it, it come, it pops out more. <laughs> Off the yellow right so what was I gonna do this the size like two and a half yeah let's go two and a half okay so we'll go two and a half this paper is so pretty by okay so if this is four and a quarter let's start at four inches and then I'm gonna see how that looks. Oh, Michelle, that makes me so happy that you liked those. Yeah, I just figured that that could be an you know a good resource for trying to keep track of trying to keep track of the stories. Um. Okay. So I think that that looks pretty cool. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna keep it square too. I was gonna round the corners, but. Since these are all the sharp corner, you know, and then it looks like it's built into there. So we're just going to keep that sharp corner. I think that'll be good. this year that is so cool I I did that last year the um the pocket advent with someone actually I should show you what I got do I have it do I have that available it's so cool oh I do let's see if I can go get it I cannot wait to clean my office I cannot wait studio 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 I can't wait okay let me show you this because this is so cool and it's so like not me 
which makes it even cooler. Okay, so um, Michelle at the, at the stamp spot, that's where these books come from. Every year she does this like pocket, um, a pocket advent exchange. And the idea is that, and I, I totally like <laughs> didn't do it right last year because I ran out of time, so I couldn't make a cool pocket page. So instead I just individually wrapped all the things <laughs> and sent them as like individual like presents to open, which worked fine too. Um, actually, I think I'm going to score tape this for strength purposes. Um, anyway, so you put together, I can't remember if it's 24 or 25 things, <laughs> items, and um, you send them to another crafty person that Michelle links you up with, and then uh, you have a cool advent to do every day in December. That's like a really fun crafty advent. Um, I'm so excited. Michelle, you're going to have to share what you get. 25. Yeah. Please share what you get because I'm so excited to see to see what you get. Last year, um, me and one other lady were in the U.S. because technically Michelle is in Australia. So most of the people who do the pocket exchange are in Australia. But she had a person in the States and then asked if I would do it too in exchange with that person. So... Um, I wonder if she's gotten more this year. That would be really cool. Well, obviously she has, because Michelle, she has you now. But here's what I got. Um, yours, yours came last week. Wait, who did you get yours from? Well, my sender was in the U.S. and I sent to Canada. Okay. Who was yours from, Michelle? Because did yours, is yours like this at all? Do you know? I won't give it away if, if you have the same thing. I won't open it up and show you. Because I want you to be surprised. You'll have to tell me. Um, but anyway, it was really cool. Because the person who sent my stuff, who sent me my stuff, um, and we just exchanged between the two of us. She, like our styles were so different that it's just, it was really cool to get something so so different. And I have an idea for the book that she sent me and how to use it that I might do this year. We'll see. Some At some point I will do it. Okay, so we've got Caring Deeply. Goes in the middle here. Okay. And then, so that's gonna be the two sides. Actually, I can go ahead and score tape these right into the album. And then I've got the butterflies to add in, which I might just, I'll probably just staple them on. Laborde Valine from Louisiana. Nope, okay, nope, that is not who, that is not who I had, or who had me. Laborde, yeah, nope. Okay, so here's what mine sent. So since I know you don't have the same one. <laughs> So I got this, um, it's a 12 Days of Christmas vintage children's book, like one of the little golden books that had the golden edge. And she cut that off and then spiral bound it with a bunch of pages. And on the inside are like the, the actual like pages from the, the book. But then she also put in these folders that have pockets in them. So like there are pockets in here that I could insert stuff into. Oops, did I miss that? Where are you? Oh, you know, if I can figure out how to get, there we go. So like, there are pockets here that I can put stuff into, right? So we've got this one, and then there's like some other areas where I can put stuff. So it's just like, um, what is that called? Like a junk journal almost, but intermixed in with this vintage book. And it's so cool. It's just so cool. So what I thought about doing in this is documenting um, recipes, like Christmas recipes that we do. So like the cookies that we make and some of the food that we make for dinner time um, and all of that and just having like photos of the food and then I could paper clip in the recipe or stick it in some of the pockets. Um, I thought that that would be so cool and I just... I love the imagery 
in this book. I just love it. It's so pretty. So anyway, this is what I got last year. It's just, and that's what I mean. Like it's vintage and you guys know I don't do anything vintage, like not a thing vintage. So it just was really, really cool. But originally she had all these little gifts down inside all the pockets. So it would be like a little thing of, of washi tape that I would open one day and maybe like some tags that I would open one day. Like it was just so cool. It was really cool. Um, a really special, special thing. So anyway, it was fun. Um, yes, which, you know, that also brings me to something that I've been meaning to talk to you guys about that I've just been a real loser and keep forgetting. So, um, <laughs> earlier this year, or maybe it was last month, um, there was a suggestion about doing a card swap for Christmas time or something of that nature. Um, and I was like, yeah, we should do it. And then I totally dropped the ball. So my question is, um, would you guys want to do something like that for this month? So like put together some like a card and maybe we could just do it kind of like the... Um, Kind of like the advent thing where you would just send it to one other person or or what we could do is like a like a small happy mail exchange where it could be like it doesn't have to be a, a pocket page book like that like it doesn't have to be like that i'm thinking more like a small envelope that has maybe like some ephemera in it or you know some kind of embellishment in it just something kind of fun and christmasy that we could open with a card inside, you know, so you would get a personalized card and then maybe something um, in addition to that, you know, like just something flat that would go inside of an envelope and make it not crazy expensive to send. Um, and then we could do a train or that's what that's called, right? Like a, yeah, a train <laughs> where you send to one person and that person sends to a different person and then it goes around in the circle. So like everybody gets one so you only have to send one is that something that you guys would like to do um and if it is what i can do is set up a post um where you guys can where you guys can opt into it so like a way for me to know who who wants to do it and then um once we have everybody's names, then we can send, you know, we can get that going. If you're interested, if you want to. So I know some might not and some might be. So I think that would be pretty cool. Um, this year I want to do Christmas cards for the family. Um, which we did two years ago and we just failed last year at it so I'd like to do Christmas cards this year and I'll probably I'll probably send them to all the patrons too so you guys can all get a Christmas card from me so I think that would be pretty cool okay so there is the photo collage and then on this other side we will put this one So I think that's what I'll do. I'll make some kind of post on both Patreon and on Facebook and um, just have you guys respond to it. Let me know if you're interested and maybe we'll do that with the deadline of responding by um, maybe by Saturday so that that's a pretty quick turnaround, but that's okay. Um, so we'll get answers by Saturday and then that way... Um, That way I can, or maybe like a response, <laughs> a respond tomorrow, <laughs> like respond by the end of the day tomorrow. And then on Saturday, I can probably compile a list and, um, or like you guys can get together, get your supplies together. And then as soon as I'm back, I could get you a list of, or tell you who to send yours to, you know, I think that's what I'll do. Okay. So for this one. 
Um, what I want to do for the middle portion is I want to take this yellow butterfly, I almost called it a flower, yellow butterfly. <laughs> I'm sticking on this wood, or this, um, gosh, words, words escape me today, this uh, chipboard piece into the middle, and then I'm going to push it down so that it's at the bottom. And I'm going to staple it in place, so let's just kind of push it down in there. But I suppose I want to figure out like exactly where. Like I might want to do this so that it's all in the white area. I kind of like that plan so that you can still see the title at the top, but they're not covering that up at all. So... Maybe like okay, there. <laughs> Be even. All right, so maybe like right there, like that and like that. Let's do it. Okay, so this is going here, and what are the chances I'm going to be able to staple through the whole thing? Let's try it. Worst case, it doesn't work. Oh, it worked just fine. Okay, so that one's there. And then we're going to do this one down as well. I would cement our friendship for real. That's so funny. Millie, we are friends for real. It's true. One of these years, um, one of these years when we go to visit... Aaron's like aunts. I don't know if we ever will though. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We're not very close with his aunts, but his aunts live in Wisconsin. Um, so if ever we go there, I don't know how close you are to them, but it would be like a total meetup for sure. Although we don't have to visit their aunts to meet up, you know, once COVID is, once COVID's over, I'm all over this country. Not really. I mean, I would love to be, but... <laughs> That's the new thing. Like, whenever we travel, I'll be like, hey, anybody live here? Let's meet up. Okay. Yeah. Work this time. Get in there and... Okay. So there's that one. And then one more. <laughs> That's so funny that they, that your families all know who I am. That's hilarious. I love it. Did I tell you guys that I got to meet the lady in my neighborhood? Who knew me? Did I tell you that at Halloween? I like went out to go trick or treating and she was basically right outside my house, which was really cool. I would love to do a crop, Millie. Oh. Uh, I would love to do a crop. That is definitely something that would be totally in the works. That's something I've talked about too, that like one of these, eventually I would love to host a crop and I know nothing about it so you know you guys would have to like, give me all the grace in the world because <laughs> I would just be winging it oh my god I cannot get this can we like cooperate little butterfly I know you just want to I know you just want to flutter away and be free but no um okay. got it okay so um Anyway, that is like a dream. That is a dream someday. Okay, so that's how that's gonna look. So I like that we have the butterflies going up, we can see the title behind there, and then when we move it, we can see the words. Um, okay, so this is story number one, and I also, I'm gonna date stamp it right there, so that, hmm. Oh, that one's so good. Okay, so that we know when I wrote it, which was today. So. <laughs> Uh, ink. Ink, please. Okay. All right. So, all right. Today is November. Today's the 4th, right? Yes. November 4th, 2021. Yes, because tomorrow is the 5th. 
Okay. Story one. Done. Um, okay. All right, I can read it really quick to you guys, and then we'll move on to story number two. So I said, uh, caring deeply. Aaron and I often have conversations about what it means to care deeply for each other and our kids, and how, can, how we can improve as both parents and spouses. What does it mean to be a good parent, a good spouse, a good friend, a good person? And what does it look like to care deeply for one another? Honestly, I think asking the question already shows a great deal about a person's character and desire for care. If we weren't always looking for ways to improve, to connect deeper, to care more, I think that would say a lot about our depth of care. The fact that there is a desire to improve shows we care about our family and each other. It says a lot. Pondering this question and reflecting back on our lives these last few months, I can tell you without a doubt that deep care comes from genuinely being interested in another person. It comes when we are able to think of someone outside of ourselves and ask the question, what can I do to make their day better? Deep care comes when we take the time out of our day to reach out, offer kind words, ask questions, and listen to the answers. Deep care comes when we put down our to-do list, clear our schedules, and just be with the people we love. Deep care comes from connection and a desire for deeper connection. I care so deeply for my family and friends, and while I know I could be so much better at showing it, I hope they can feel just how much they mean to me. So caring deeply and what does that mean? And then that's where I kind of, I just got pictures that showed like different moments of connection over the last few months. So I have a picture from the zoo. I can hold this up a little bit higher so you guys can see. Um, this is a picture from the zoo where Izzy and Jonah were holding hands walking down the road and it was just really cute. That's a picture of Aaron and Jonah on the train. He was kind of scared at first and so Aaron was cuddling him to make him feel better. This is one of Jonah and I cooking together. He loves to cook and help us cook. So that's just one of us. And I set the phone on my table and just put a timer on it and had it take a bunch of photos. And then this is one of Aaron and I just going out randomly one day for a cup of coffee in our downtown. Um, so just moments of connecting to other people, you know? All right, so that is story number one. This is getting nice and chunky fat. All right, <laughs> let's put that, you know, I'm gonna put that back here. Okay, now let's move on to story number two. All right, so this one, this one I'm actually going to do some handwritten journaling, but I already pre-wrote it out on here, so I so I don't like lose track of my thought and you know write something. Not that you, not that anything written is dumb, but you know what I mean. <laughs> like, you don't need to be messing up. I'm gonna take this off. I was really, I was really cold earlier. Um, so I put a scarf on to keep warm. Okay, so. Um, I remember the one that's all about you, but what is this pocket page notebook? Uh, so Millie, it's just kind of the same thing. So pocket page notebook is, um, pocket page notebook is like, I have multiples of them and I just fill them with longer journaling, <laughs> like, like stuff, stuff that's a little bit deeper than the, you know, my other stuff, which I guess, you know, <laughs> I think a lot of my stuff is probably a bit deep, but that's okay. Um, but that one is just to, to be like a place for a lot of words that I can just lightly decorate <laughs> and make it look pretty. That's pretty much it. All right, so this card says things I care about, things I don't care about. And so what I'm going to do is cut this part and re-adhere it down onto some other cards <laughs> so that I can add more journaling because you got, you know, you gotta have all the words, I suppose. So no, it's too close there and I don't need that and then this I also need to 
wonder. Do you know so that I can make it kind of the same size as each other? Uh, we'll just kind of like <laughs> make some little marks. Okay. <laughs> That'll work. Let's say it's a story album in a pocket page notebook. <laughs> Uh, yes, you are correct. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So now I've got the two titles, things I care about and things I don't care about. And what I'm going to do is put these down at the top of the page. Okay. Things I care about. Yep. And things I don't. This one was a really easy, like an easy prompt from the cards. And I love that when a when a journaling card can just be like, yep, yeah, I'm gonna, that's easy, I can just write some things down. Um but then you go and you sit down to write your story or to write your journaling and you sit there for a few minutes like, well, gosh, like, hmm, what, what things do I actually care about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, that's going to be so easy. Yeah, okay. So for this one, I printed a photo um, that really has nothing to do with the story. I just like this photo. And it, um, this is from my sister's bachelorette party. And it's all of us girls next to this mural of a, um, what I think is a chimpanzee who's like drinking beer or drinking wine because this is at a winery. And we went up there and did like the, um, like see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil type of face. Um, and I don't know if to me, for some reason that just made me think of like, I don't know, like, I don't care about this. I don't know. Like when you close your eyes and, and cover your eyes and whatever. It's kind of like, I don't want to know about this because I, I don't care about it. I don't know. It, it probably makes no sense, but to me, it just seemed fitting. <laughs> so that's what's going with this because why not? And also I just like that photo. So, so that's my reasoning. Um, I don't always like, I don't, I don't always have photos that specifically go with stories. And so sometimes I'll just pull ones that have a certain feeling to them and use that. So what I'm going to do is put this butterfly on here. Now, this butterfly was not from the care kit. This was actually from the one little word kit this year. One of them, one of the mini kits, or it could have been like the main kit. I don't know, but it was one little word. I do know that. And um, it's the same size and style of the butterflies from the add-on butterflies, right? But I like the gray color better. The other one was hot pink and it just wasn't jiving for me. So I chose not the hot pink. So I'm just going to put this felt butterfly in the middle of the butterfly patterned card. And then this chipboard on top. And this says, um, taking charge of my own life looks like this, which kind of goes, goes well enough with the story. So then that's kind of like a title-ish card. We've got a photo that I'm just going to leave as is. I did also pull these two chipboard. One says care less, one says care more. And I considered, I considered putting them like on the opposite sides of us. You know, like one side is care more, one side is care less, whatever, more or less, less more. Um, but I don't know, it kind of didn't make sense. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thinking I might just add those into my Project Life supplies. And if I don't use them there, well then they'll go into my circle embellishments. Um, so that's that. Uh, Maria, so tomorrow, tomorrow for December Daily. So what I'm going to do is tomorrow's live starts at 1. And um, my plan is to start with my October Daily stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring out everything I have left 
from my October daily supplies and I'm going to go through it, figure out what I want to keep for next year and what I do not want to keep for next year. And then uh, whatever I'm not keeping, I'm actually planning to just create some like pack like packs of stuff, I suppose, depending on how much I want to get rid of, I suppose. Um, but I want to create some packs of supplies and then come August next year, I will, I'll do some kind of giveaway and just give those away, like send them to people. Um, so that it goes, it goes to somebody who will, who would like it and want it and use it, you know? So that is my plan. And then I'll just kind of store that stuff, um, separately from the rest of my things so that when I pull out October next year, it's all the stuff that I wanted to keep. So that's what I'm going to do first. And then once October daily stuff is cleared out, I don't think it will take that long because there's not, I mean, I have, I have quite a bit, but I don't have like a ridiculous amount. So, you know, we'll see. <laughs> and, um, once I'm done with that, then I'm going to pull out my December daily. So I will start with my, um, I think I'm going to start with the new stuff that I got and get that organized first and then I will move into my older stuff, pull that out and see, like go through it again and see what goes with, what goes with what I'm using this year and what doesn't and whatever doesn't go with my stuff, I'm going to de-stash that as well because I, I don't do well when I have a ton of a ton, you know, and I don't want to build up more storage than I've already got. So that's what I'm going to do. And maybe those, uh, the de-stashed December stuff, maybe I can do a giveaway like once I get back. Or maybe that can be part of our Zoom thing, you know, the um, prep day or prep day viewing, whatever Zoom thing can be some... December daily stuff. Uh, but that's my plan, is to just kind of go through all of it, and get it organized. I want my room to feel like Christmas has begun is when I get back from Mexico. So I want to leave it like, yay, Christmas, and then come back and just get right into it, you know? All right, I spaced these a little wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> That is okay. So I'm using these cork pieces as bullet points, of course. I did consider putting a tiny fray sticker across each of them, um, but I don't like the color of the tiny fray sticker with the cards that I have. So I ultimately decided not to do that. And I think what I'll do is draw a couple of lines for each of them. So maybe I will do like, um, we'll just kind of wing it <laughs> and hope for the best. So I'm like, we can draw a line and a line. Even if they are uneven, that is okay. Although I probably could, you know, like actually make this even <laughs> if it matters. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we'll go to this. This. So it's all going to move anyway, so I might decide I don't care about it. And I'm doing this first because I have a habit <laughs> that when I go to handwrite something, I always have my first line of journaling is way bigger than all of the rest of the journaling. And that drives me insane. So I figure if I draw myself some lines, I might prevent that. <laughs> that everything might be a little bit more even for me. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, this one is a bit far down. Oh well. 
Any of you guys do that? Like, just start your journaling gung ho, and it's huge, and then you, and then by the end, it's like really tiny. <laughs> that is definitely that's why I, I typically type my stuff out because it just is way more even that way. Okay, and then this one. I thought about doing this before getting on the live today, just to save some time, but then I was like, meh, I kind of want to. Ooh, like get the video process showing how to assemble the cards all together but it's a great way to make your own card you know okay so there's going to be things I care about one um you're going to Puerto Rico with your family or coming back on December 3rd so you're going to try to decorate before you leave yes yay um we're doing that as soon as we get back we're going to decorate Aaron doesn't know that yet but my mom and I, my mom's going to come over and help me decorate my house for Christmas. Um, so I just feel like I need her help right now. <laughs> like I, I, um, I am perfectly capable of decorating my house, but we've just had so much going on and I just am tired of making decisions like that. So I'm like, come over and just tell me what to do with my house. Cause she's amazing. She's amazing at home decor. I'm trying to talk her into starting a YouTube channel of like, you know how there's all the people that are like decorate with me kind of people and they show you what they buy and then they show you how to use it. I told her she could do that and that I would help her out. So she might, she might do that next year. And if she does, I'll be like, go watch my mom. <laughs> All the lines, all the lines. <laughs> totally freehanding. That's cool though. So, almost there. And then I'm going to write in my journaling too. Sorry, you're going to have to bear with me while I do that. But then this layout will be done. <laughs> so, it's another quick one. They're all quick, which is why I think I can just get them all. Get them all done tonight. All right. Okay, one more. And... Okay, so there's the journaling. Okay, so let's go things I care about first. All right, so I'm going to say I wonder if I could fit this all on the two lines. Maybe I'll try it. <laughs> so I care about.
Sorry, I'm so quiet. <laughs> Concentration. Uh, okay. All right, so there is card one. Okay, now don't care. All right, so I...
<laughs> okay, this one needs another line. <laughs> Okay, and then last but not least. Okay. Oh, all right. So there we go. Okay. So sorry. Yeah. It takes me a second to like get it all, get it all out. All right. So this one is going to go in my story album and let's see if I've got any of these. Some of these are not all the way filled up. Let me see if I've got any that have a page where this would fit. So, like, this one is a no. Um, this is actually a little bit too full. Like, I need to separate some of this and put it in a different one. No. No. All right. Well, so not this one. Okay. Some of these I need to go through and write down the configurations that I'm missing so I can go back in and specifically design some of my pages to go in them and then I can complete the album. Uh, all right, so this one is my other non-complete. So let's see what I've got. And this one I do have extra room in it so I can always add if I need to, if I don't have any there for something. No, no, no. Oh, maybe here. Maybe right there. Okay, so um what I need is another, do I have any of those available to me right now? I can just grab it. No. So let's get a page protector out for this to go in. Oh gosh. Oh wait, ow. Ow, ow, ow. Bang my head on all the things. I might have one in here actually. This has a bunch of page protectors in it. So let's find. Yes, that way I don't have to go digging. All right. Close up. So. That can go there. Okay, so what this is going to look like, this photo is going to go down in that pocket. The butterfly will go up here. And then I just wanted to do like things I care about and things I don't care about. 
kind of like that. So then that's my that's my full layout there. And so again, it's a simple one. It's it only took me a while because I hand wrote it. But um, so I'll go ahead. I'll read this one too. So this one I have things I care about. I said I care about my family that they feel loved, supported, and connected. I care about stories, reading them, writing them, sharing them. I care about kindness and inclusion. I want people to feel welcome and know they matter. I care about cleanliness, keeping a tidy, but not perfect, home. I care about trust, truth, and dependability, That I am, and that I am projecting all three into the world. Things I don't care about. I don't care about being perfect, just that I try my best. I don't care if my kids are athletic, talented, smart, etc. Only that they are kind and do their best. I don't care if I never get to see the whole world. The whole world already lives in my home. I don't care if nothing happens to me when I die. I know I have lived a life full of love and that's good enough for me. I don't care if my family decides not to keep my scrapbooks. The process of telling stories and processing life through them has been worth every second. So just a list of things, right? Just a list of what do you care about and what do you not care about? Um, which was interesting to write. <laughs> and I just literally wrote word for word what I had written earlier. So I did not come up with any of that on the spot. That was earlier I did that. All right, so that is layout number two. Um, now... Next, let's move on to layout number three. Oh, get that over there. Okay, so this next one is going to go inside of my one little word journal. One of the fun things today is um, all four of these projects are either different sizes. Well, I mean, they're all in a different album, but different albums, different sizes, uh, different projects. And that's kind of that keeps it really interesting you know it for me it keeps it interesting because I can try to gauge my journaling for lots of different stories okay so I've got some photos I've got some of them like this one I did earlier I used this earlier but I actually wanted to use it in a larger form in this book now my journal um the beginning of my journal is all like is all very filled out and nice like I have you know, like my pages are good, whatever. I've got all my stuff in here. I've got some photos and then I like failed. So, um, I just kind of throw stuff in here as I feel like it. So like all the beginning stuff is all in there and wonderful. And then April happened, uh, which was the month that I did one little word, the one little word prompt. And, um, I kind of have some stuff in here but I didn't finish it. And then May is like nothing. And June is nothing. And July is nothing. And August, I was like, I had a kit that I was, that I just felt like went really well with one little word. So in August, I figured why not? I'll just do a layout in one little word because I can. So these photos are all from September. So I figured that I would just put this in the month of September because you know, that kind of works for me. So what I'm gonna do is take this photo, which I printed as a six by eight, and I'm going to put it into this, this album, just on the side there. So it fills up the page. Um, and it's not exactly the right size, and that's okay. So I think this needed to be like a little bit, it probably needed to be eight and a quarter and maybe a little bit wider than six inches, but um, I don't mind having the polka dot because it's just a like a polka dot pattern or a dot pattern, I suppose. I don't mind that having having that peek out because that's just kind of like having a having a mat. Come on now, oh, for real. Okay, how about we just nicely come off? Thank you, thank you, tape that and this okay so my photo I'm just going to stick in here kind of somewhat in the middle uh, you know like maybe there 
Okay, so that gives me this giant photo, which I think is cool. I really like that. It's very, like, peaceful. I don't know. There's some... And that's, I feel like that's how I felt in this moment because our house stuff was so stressful at this point. And Aaron and I were just like, let's just go downtown and get coffee. Um, I think he had the day off for whatever reason. So it just, that day felt peaceful. Okay, so then what we're going to do, this card is going to be just like a decorative card. So I'm going to, and this will give some bulk, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. And so I'm going to take this self-care for the win chipboard piece. We're going to layer it on top of the orange butterfly there. And I'm thinking I'll put it maybe like right here. Staple it on there, and then this one I'm going to staple on too. It's kind of like up flying away. Like that. Alright, so that's kind of a filler card. That just is a filler card that says every little thing is going to be alright. I've got self-care with my journaling on it down at the bottom, and then a photo to put up in the top. Um, I think what I might do, and I did this before... is just separate this and then add some date stamping through the middle. I like the way that that worked out last time. So, just going to add some tape here and start with the top two. Um, let's see what you guys are up to over here. What is this? Okay, wait. You guys are talking about setting of decorating early. Yes. Let's see. Your main tree is up. It's okay. I'm reading yours. So your main tree is up, half decorated. Kitchen is half put together and doing it in little spurts and enjoying it. Um, that's so exciting. I can't wait to get my house decorated. Haven't had a warm Christmas in a long time. Yes. On the 1st of November. You know what? Um, you guys probably already said this. Hold on. Before I repeat everybody else. <laughs> always waited until... Okay, so Michelle, we are the same. We always waited until Thanksgiving weekend to decorate. And, um, like, my family and... Uh, once Aaron and I were married, like Aaron and I waited until Thanksgiving as well. And then, um, and we did last year too, but then this year I'm like, yeah, no, I just want to get it up. <laughs> I'm just ready. I'm ready to have it up. So we're going to do it as soon as we get back. <laughs> Grown woman. That's so true. Yes. Just took out your trick or treat, trick or treat. Yep. I actually just got a wreath. I put that up on my door. It's just kind of like a wintry wreath. I needed a new one because my my other ones are getting a little um, a little janky after all the years, you know. Stop. Okay, so I think maybe I just want to put like the tiniest of slivers, like that. Maybe it's probably good. I think what I'll do is put new. Let's put these in here. Okay. So like that and that. And then we'll do these ones next. Christmas music. That's so funny. I, um... Have not started Christmas music yet. Although, okay, so normally Aaron's a little bit humbug. Like a little bit. Like he's, he likes Christmas too, but he's just not on the same level. He's, he's not on my level. Um, 
Like, he's not real into the Hallmark movies and all that stuff, or at least he gripes about it, you know, as soon as it starts. And the funny thing is, is yesterday, I think it was yesterday, he was up um, getting the kids, like, ready for bed and reading books and stuff. And I came upstairs and they were listening to Christmas music. So, apparently I'm not the only one who is feeling ready. <laughs> I don't know if the kids put that on or if Aaron put that on, but, you know, just saying that he was listening to Christmas music at the beginning of November. He would give me such a hard time. He would, he would be relentless in his teasing me. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually going to just, <laughs> this is going to be funny. I'm going to date stamp this with today's date because I technically wrote this in today, but, um... Also, all the photos are from September, so that's why it's in the September section. But I'm date stamping it today. Because <laughs> that makes sense. All right, so all I'm going to do is just come in here and, like, go across the middle. So it's almost like a washi tape. And if, you know, some of it doesn't stamp the correct way, that's totally fine. Right, so kind of like that. It gives it a little bit of black across there. Looks good. Um, and I don't have anything to put over here. Although, I wonder if I could grab, let me grab this out and see if there's anything in here that kind of suits my fancy. We'll see, because I'm not gonna use these. These don't make sense and I need to put them in here. Uh, All right, so let's see here. Uh, that doesn't really make sense for this one. It's pretty, like it would look pretty on there, but it doesn't make sense for my story at all. Um, and these are too small, I think. Taking great care just seems too small. Uh, orange, no, 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 no. Yeah, I don't think so. There's not really anything that's Not really anything, so I think I'll just leave it blank. <laughs> and who cares, right? Caring less about this right now. Okay, so I'll put all those pieces back in there. Put the life thingy back in there. Okay, I think we'll just let that be what it is. Okay, so for this one, I said self-care. So what I did is I went through my photos in September and um, journaled about the things that we were doing in September that were self-care or that I was doing that felt like self-care. So I said this month, and this was my prompt. I started with this month, comma, self-care has looked like dot, dot, dot. So... This month, self-care has looked like taking some time off of working to work on the house without excess stress. Because I took the month of September off of all of my stuff. I had pre-recorded things and whatever so that I didn't have to do anything in September for crafting. This month, self-care has looked like spending a girl's night with Kate shopping together at a mom-to-mom -mom sale. This month, self-care has looked like putting out the fall sweaters, oh, pulling out the fall sweaters and scarves and embracing the changing seasons. This month, self-care has looked like taking time for a morning coffee date with Erin, getting to know our new town. This month, self-care has looked like spending time as a family, even when life is busy. Intentional time is self-care. And that's that. So that is in my one little word journal. And that is layout number four three. So this just goes inside of the folio. Um, and yeah, pretty easy peasy. And like that we go. So that is number three. And then let's do number four. And that'll be all of them. So exciting. Maria, you have your son's birthday. So after his birthday, you're going 
to have a craft day with your sister and daughter-in-law to make some decorations for the new house and have some crafty fun. Ooh, that sounds so fun. That sounds really, really fun. Um, let's get rid of that. Uh, thank you, Michelle. You know that photo, it, um, we were outside drinking coffee and there's like this little alleyway where they have tables and chairs set up. And, um, there, we were the only ones there. So I just set my phone a little ways from us and kind of, ang you know, angled it right. And Aaron, of course, is like, of course you're taking pictures, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I have to get myself in the picture somehow, you big jerk, you know? So, um, I set it up and I set it on a timer. I use this app called Photo Timer Plus. I don't know. Did you guys tell me about it? Whoever told me about it is like my savior because I love that app. So it's on iPhone. It's called Photo Timer Plus and it lets you select a delay. So you can say like, I want a 15 second or 20 second delay in order for me to get from my phone to wherever I want to be photographed. And then you can set up um, the number of photos that it will take. So you could take like 20 photos in a row and it will do this three beeping thing. So it'll be like beep, 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 photo, beep, 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 photo for like however many you wanna do. And so um, that's how I take photos of myself now is I just, you know, me, I'm going to just go ahead and put adhesive on the back of this now. Um, so that's how I take those photos. <laughs> right? Oh, husbands take the photo. Exactly. You know, he did the other day, though, because I give, I give him such a hard time. I tease him relentlessly about the fact that he's, he's the, <laughs> the main feature of all the photos and that there's no photos of me. There is. But they're just like selfies, of course. So anyway, the other day we were carving pumpkins and he went and grabbed his phone to make sure that he got pictures of me doing it with Jonah. And I was so, I was so appreciative and touched that he did that. But they just don't think about it. At least he doesn't normally think about it. Nope, it goes this way. Um, so this story is care a bit less. And, um... I knew I wanted to tell a story about something that I am either trying to care less about or something that I actually really do care less about. And um, I didn't know what the story was going to be like, like in actuality. I didn't have all the details figured out until I went through my photos to try and figure out what photo helped me tell a story about something I'm caring less about and or trying to care less about. And I found this photo of, um, I took it of my feet and a paint bucket and a paintbrush. So this is when we were painting the house, which we're still not done with. We still have a little bit left to go. Well, actually we have quite a bit left to go. Um, but it's the busy season, so we probably won't get to that until January. So anyway, I have this picture of my feet and a drop cloth and the paint bucket with paintbrush. And I decided that the story I wanted to tell here was about um, was about the house stuff and how how it got to the point where it just felt really, really, really overwhelming. It still is really, really, really overwhelming. Um, but how we were trying to do or I was trying to do so many different projects at the same time that it just felt a little bit paralyzing and overwhelming and how uh, Aaron and I have decided we've, I think this is like week number three of this, that, that at the beginning of the week, we're gonna pick three things that we wanna get done, three manageable things, like realistic things, a smart goal thing, right? That we can get done during the week um, and then not care about anything else until those three things are done. Um, and so that's the story I'm telling is just about, about that, like learning to care less about the huge, huge list of what needs to be done and focusing on what we can do. 
So for this one, I'm scrap lifting a, a layout that I did in the summertime that I really loved, which is just three journaling cards on the bottom, a photo at the top. I'm going to add some embellishments to this. And then I'm going to put the orange thread in my sewing machine and stitch a border around the outside and date stamp it. So it's going to be really, really simple. Um, but I love the configuration. Like I love having this, this big square element in the middle of a big square. It just feels really good. So I think what I'll do is just add a bit of roller adhesive, just tiny little dots, so I can get this positioned where I want it to go. Um, so it's an interesting story because like, or an interesting layout because the photo is not something like, it's not like a really cute photo of my kids or anything, but it's a very real story. And I think that that's pretty cool too. Okay. Sometimes those are the stories that I, I enjoy telling the most. Actually, let me do the edge ones and then we can do the middle. So we'll do that, that. this. So I only added my journaling on this middle card. So it didn't really need to say a whole ton. It didn't need to be a big paragraph of writing or anything, just kind of an acknowledgement, so to say. Okay, so what I'm going to do to get this on here in the right places is I'm going to start with this middle card. So right, we built from the top down. Um, we did the top and then the edges and then the middle piece. So I'm going to go the opposite way to stick everything down for real. That way, you know, it's all kind of, it gives me a chance to make sure it's all even. All right, so that's going to go there. And we'll do this one. <laughs> Hilarious, I love that. When he sees the album, he's like, oh, how you have a picture of that? Heck yeah, that's awesome, Maria. I love that. <laughs> Usually not the greatest. That's so funny. Michelle, you're so lucky. Oh, you're so lucky. That's really cool. That he's into it. That's really cool. I think I need to get, like, if, if, if there was a way for me to get Aaron really into photograph or photography, it would be through like the tech part because he's super into all the tech stuff. That's what his job is. He works in IT um, and he just loves like, like he's working on our house is basically like a smart house in a lot of ways. Um, at least like we have a, a doorbell, like a Google doorbell or a Nest doorbell. I don't know what it is. One of those. Um, and it's it's a very we have a google fied house we'll put it that way and i feel like if i got him some like really cool tech stuff with photography he could probably get into it so that's what i need to do but he has other things i don't know yeah it's it is what it is right it is what it is he's learning he'll take more photos I guilt him into it, and then he does it. <laughs> so it all works out. It all works out in the end. Okay. So there we go. So that is built on now. Um, I think I'll add these after I stitch it so that we get the page itself is as pliable as possible. So I'm going to move these off because I probably won't need my roller adhesive anymore. I'm gonna grab my sewing machine and the orange thread, get it threaded up, and then we'll stitch around the border. So let's do that. <clears throat> Envelopes back away too. All right, so 
thread, machine. And oh, plugs. <laughs> okay, so oh wait, orange. <laughs> orange. I mean white would be <clears throat> fine too, but I think orange would be cooler since we have that. And I don't have any hot pink, otherwise hot pink would be cool too. But, <clears throat> orange. So we'll stick that on here. Nope. I have that fresh needle, so it's much easier to <laughs> thread. I still need to clean that other one real good. Let's see if I can <clears throat> get it going again, you know? Uh, don't come back out. Stay in there, please. Oh, you know what else I want to do tonight <laughs> after I get off of this? Are any of you guys Survivor watchers? Is anybody a fan of Survivor? We are, like, really big fans of Survivor. And so the new episode was last night, and we haven't watched it yet. I would like to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this. You guys know the drill. Mm. If it's too loud, just go ahead and turn your sound down. And I'll make this quick. Alright, so there's that with the orange, which looks really good. <clears throat> okay, so we've got this. We're going to put on some embellishments. And then, wait, which side? This side. And then date stamp it, and this will be done. Oh, Lenny, you're, you are too. Lenny, Lynn, Lynn. <laughs> Lynn, you are a Survivor fan too. That is awesome. It is it is definitely like my favorite show. 
on regular TV. I love Survivor. I watched it when I was a kid and then stopped watching it um, probably in college years. Lost interest. And then when Aaron and I were dating, we started watching it together again. And it's just like we, we both love it so much. Um, we always root for the underdogs because we just can't help ourselves. We just want them to win. And they always, always lose. And then usually the jerk person wins. But, but you got to have some respect for those, for the jerks, because they, they play that game hard. They play it hard. Like Tony, oh, Tony. We hated Tony his first season. And then we actually liked him when he came back. Um, it's so funny. It's so good. Wait, what? I have to see this. Okay, wait. Press you to four layouts. Oh, thank you, Marcy. Yeah, four layouts today. From, like, planning in the morning to done by the evening. Makes me really, really happy. Um, your son watch it when he's home from college. That's so cool. Wait, who's Pappy? I think he went by Pappy years ago on Survivor. He was a lawyer in my hometown, and you taught his wife. What? Michelle, that's so cool. You know somebody on Survivor. That's super cool. Um, a guy in your town. I haven't known, we don't know anybody to go. Like, nobody near us. I don't even know if there's been, like, a Michigan person in a couple years. My mom uh, was trying to talk my uncle and her into going. So, my mom has a younger brother who is, um, he was born when she was 18. So they're 18 years apart. So my uncle is only five years older than me. So we grew up almost more like cousins um, than, you know, like a an uncle-niece kind of relationship. So he currently lives in Montana and um, is married. He got married a couple years ago and they have a son who is uh, two, he's either one year or two years younger than Izzy. So we have kids the same age. Um, anyway, and my mom is his sister. So he, um, he went out to Montana and he worked at Yellowstone for a couple years and then he stayed there and he, he became like, for a time he would go cave spelunking and find like, gemstones and get them polished and make them into jewelry and then um he would find bones he actually found in montana um the most well-preserved mammoth uh mammoth skeleton so he found that and um uh right before his son was born he found it and then contacted museums and contacted like the people who would come and get it out and um he was able to go I think at some point to see the dig site and in like my poor uncle in the the news clipping about it it was like Montana fisherman blah blah found found the mammoth and that was like his only thing like they didn't even say his name or anything but which is like total crap. That is such total crap. And the thing is, is like, he did the right thing by contacting museums about it because um, you can take, you know, people who are scavengers can take parts of the mammoth, like the tusks and whatnot, and um, put it on the black market. So he, he, he did the right thing and contacted it. It's just sad that he didn't get to have like any recognition for it at all. And then um, they wanted to name it for for their son, Jack. So they wanted to call it Jack's Mammoth, but then the museum didn't let them do that. So kind of a bummer. I think that they actually started digging it up on the day that Jack was born. Um, but anyway, so he's like, he's like somebody who goes out and finds stuff. Like he finds gems and he finds, you know, skeletons of, of mammoths. And then now what he does is he takes these trees that are 
that are dead. They grow on the side of mountains. Um, and he'll go and he'll chop them down. So he like climbs up the mountains and then cuts down these, <laughs> these trees, these branches. And they're, they're called a twisted juniper. So imagine like a juniper pine tree that is dead, loses its needles, but the, um, the trunks of it are, are like twisted and like really cool looking. So he cuts those down. They like fall down the mountain. He goes after them and gets them and then brings them home and turns them into furniture. So he's become a woodworker that does furniture and sculptures and like all this stuff, um, which is really cool. So he's an artist in his own right. So my mom was like, how cool would it be if my 18 year old young or 18 year younger brother, who is this mountain man, and my mom, who is like <laughs> middle-aged suburban mom, she's like, I think we would make a really cool pair to go on the show for like when they do the pairs, when they do, you know, two people who know each other go on. Um, but my uncle refused. He was like, I'm not doing that. So they never applied. She, she was convinced that they would get on and be able to go. <laughs> and um, we were like, yeah. She's like either Survivor or Amazing Race, that she wanted to do Amazing Race. I think she wanted to do Amazing Race more. Like that was the ultimate dream was to do Amazing Race with him. Um, and he was like, no. <laughs> so... So that dream died in the water. Um, cool. So you guys, look at that. We got this done. Oh, I need day stamp it. Day stamp. And then I, then I got this done. Four layouts. Woo. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to stamp it down there at the bottom with the date. Call this one done. Um... Oh, your son wants to do it, Lynn. That'd be so cool. I hope he does. That would be so cool. Your friend's sister applied but got rejected. Aw. Tony was a crack up. Yeah, we, we like really didn't like Tony. And then um, he came back. Like he, he was on the show three times, right? So the second time we ended up liking him and the third time we really liked him. But the first time we were like, oh my God, this guy is like, so paranoid and so annoying and then he like backstabbed his cop friend the girl I can't Sarah was her name he like yeah yeah we were not team Tony on that one then he won it Ugh. all right let me read this one to you so this is caring a bit less I've got uh caring more about the things that matter most and less about the things that matter least it's bath time so you're gonna hear my kids squealing over there uh caring less about these things right now moving is freaking hard especially when it seems like something is going wrong at every turn. I had so many plans for our new home and jumped in with both feet on a ton of house projects. Some expected, others not so much. The overwhelm hit me like a ton of bricks and I found it hard to catch my breath. So Aaron and I decided to focus on only three manageable things each week, baby steps, and care less about the rest until we find the time. So that's that. So it's just a little thing about moving being stressful <laughs> and trying to care less about the whole list of everything that needs to get done. All right. So there we go. So we've got the 12 by 12. We've got the one little word one that I'll pull up here again. One little word journal. We've got the six by eight layout in the family album. Where'd you go? I probably need these all out so I can photograph them anyways. Come open, please. Okay, the six by eight, care and don't care. And then we've got the pocket page spread here somewhere, right there. Pocket page, yay. I wonder if I could like, I'm gonna have to stitch this because it is falling apart. That's okay though, but I can do that. Okay, so there's that one. Four layouts. Um, yes. When he would spy on them in the tree. Yes, the, the tree. What did he call that? His tree. He had a name for it. He was ridiculous. He was ridiculous. But, all right, friends. So, this is it for today. We have 
four layouts. So this is going to complete my all Fridays in the Story Kit Crush series on YouTube. So you're going to see all four of these again on YouTube. And when you do, you don't have to watch them because you've already seen it come together. So just know that. Um, I will likely get to the other care ones at a later time, um, either when we're back from Mexico or after Christmas, most likely. And then I will, in the last week of November, once we're back from Mexico, I will do this exact same process with the whole story kit so that um, we do the planning and we do probably the four layouts and get those ready for December so I don't have to miss a month this year. So that's my plan. All right, you guys, I am going to be back again tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock Eastern time working through putting away Halloween and getting out Christmas. So if you're free, come hang out and organize with me. And if you're not, I will catch you another time. And then after Friday, I am out of the country for an entire week. So I will be back on Monday the 15th and I have gone ahead and set up all of those events in the Facebook group so you can check them out there or um, Patreon's a little bit weird in how it does events so you'll get a notification on Sunday the 14th that will be a reminder about the 15th being the next live so just so you know. All right you guys I hope you have a great rest of your night and I will see you tomorrow. Bye friends.